not to mention the fact that whoever you're rooming with is a complete stranger. But that doesn't okay. sound like a dream vacation to you guys. <laughs> so what actually what actually happened, Ryan? Because I know you're into facts. What actually happened was it was a few weeks before it Wrestle. Was just stated to you. <laughs> it was a few weeks before Wrestle Kingdom, and I was kind of like, man, I didn't really plan to go, so it's too late for me to go. Um, but I was like, oh, let me just put it out there into the universe. You know what I mean? Maybe someone works at an airline or has a hookup or whatever. I'm just going to put it out there. So I said, hey, if anybody has a hookup with the airlines or whatever, and we can make this happen, uh, if you if you fly me to Japan or whatever, I'll pay for half the hotel room. I'll introduce you to my friends on demand audio and all that. Uh, and well, I've been to Japan <laughs> before. I know the spots. And, and I have a bunch of local friends in Japan uh, who were very helpful to me so when I was there. So just me to your friends. And okay. here's well, tell, the best tell, tell, part. But there was no the begging boys. involved. No, unbeknownst no, no. to the – yes, there was. <laughs> unbeknownst to the boys, he was going to introduce him to people that had no clue because when we asked him on the show, who were you going to introduce – do some to he said the young bucks and well, I no, had what i said was bucks. whoever whoever i might whoever i might run into you i didn't said i didn't bucks. You i said, said I, I believe the exact wording was maybe i believe the exact wording on my post was maybe you could meet some of my friends too this where i'll introduce you to some friends. on the show i asked you who would you introduce them to do you want me to produce the yeah, video no, I, I remember exactly what was said he said the young bucks and when i asked the young bucks they were like no Ryan. Do you have that letter, D.I., so we can uh, retort to our oh, boy here? We're going to read this? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, man. All right. So, so I, guess, uh, I guess our producer, Joe, got a letter. Well, what, did, what, what did he send this? You keep it 100 questions, Joe? Yeah, K100 questions at gmail. Okay. Uh, this K100 guy's name... questions at gmail.com. Okay. So this is uh... – <laughs> all right. I'm just, I'm just going to read the, read the letter yep. as, uh, as the way it states. Okay. So here we go. So we'll know who this is from. Dear Keeping It 100, this is Nikki Scars, a.k.a. Doug Larson's boy. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Larson, of course, being the, the mispronunciation of Doc Larson that we've, we've picked on Conan for last week, King. Okay. And that you doubled down on, by the way, which yeah, to reiterate that. Was tremendous. Okay. All right, so here we go. I listened to last week's show, and although I do appreciate getting included in the juicy seal of approval part, I have a few points I have to make about the segment. Number one. The second song that got played on last week's show sounded like a dying cat getting urinated on by a laughing hyena. <sighs> it was terrible, and it made me want to jump into the Delaware River during a Nikki Bella promo. What and is this, like a high school creative writing assignment? Well, he's trying this, to like, he's, was this – was he talking <laughs> – let, let me finish the thing. As Disco would say, very disrespectful. Okay, let's, let's, let's comment on number one then. All right. K- Kevin. Okay. Oh, you want me to read that part? Sorry. No, no. Com- I'll comment. You, 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 what would you, you, you want to say about part one? Oh, I just wanted to say it sounds like a, like a bad high school high school literature class creative writing assignment. It's just uh, – Okay. Any comments, Conan? He just says that because he gets buried in it. I will, I, will, I will second Kevin on that. Okay. Number two. Speaking of disco, where the hell was he? Oh, by the way, just, just to actually – I should put a picture of this. Speaking of disco, where the hell was he? I actually value his opinion. So what if he likes aliens and invisible men? It does not matter that he tried to take claim on Cyrus's idea of the ultimate X match. I still like Disco. I bet he'd be a Hall of Famer in South Park Regional Wrestling or that Colorado Smoky Mountain wrestling crap Vince Russo tried to put over and fail miserably at. How okay. can he uh, like if he just buries you through the whole thing? No, he, that, he obviously was being sarcastic when he tried to bury me. But uh, once again, just another failed attempt at, uh, at comedy. But, but where was I last week? Um, as just, just for our listeners of Keeping It 100, no, we, we do record this in segments of parts. Uh, we, we do not record six hours in a row every week. <laughs> yeah, we were, but, um, we, but, <laughs> but last week we had uh, issues with uh, uh, Hoovy was in Portugal, and Conan was the only one that could find a time frame to, um, to do the juicy segment with him. So that's why I, I was not on the show, or well, on that segment. All right. Number three, the whole song was – this is where he explains – has to explain himself, I guess. Do you remember, remember this song? Uh, I don't remember it. Do you, yeah. do you I remember, remember it? Oh, sorry, you guys say something, Conan? Yeah, it was the one with the beginning of the Game of Thrones. Yeah, the Game All of right. Thrones built up with no beat. All right, here we go. The whole song was a take from the instrumental on the season finale of last year's Game of Thrones show. I love it. it. Not- a take. In other words, I just lifted the music from a TV show. This is now my musical vision. <laughs> it was not a hip-hop beat, which is why it didn't drop. I wanted it to be the exact <laughs> instrumental as the one on the show. I think it made for a good remix song, improving I could rhyme to any genre of music. And yes, and this is in capital letters, yes, it was going somewhere. 
until that Neanderthal producer JoJo that you guys hired turned the song off before it was even halfway over. I don't know where you guys hired this imbecile, and he spells imbecile I M B E S I L. Tremendous. I don't know where you guys. <laughs> I don't know where you guys hired this imbecile at, but for a cup of Conan's Caribbean eggnog, I could probably find a farm animal to do a better job. Joe, what do you think about those comments? Well, I think it says it all when he, you know, called uh, called me an imbecile and just completely butchered the spelling. But uh, I mean, other than that, it's not my fault that this song sucked. Okay. <laughs> number four. I want to. I thank just you. want to say one thing on number three. Bro, if it was going somewhere, it took forever to get there, you know, and so we had to at some point stop the song. But go ahead. Yeah, it's not like we're sitting here listening to a world premiere track by by yeah, Wale like, like, or, it's, or it's, the new Rancid record. Not, like you get like to we, it. It's not like we think you're. This is Cashmere, you know. Right. <laughs> this isn't the intro to Ghost of Tom Joad by Rage Against right. the Machine, you know. Exactly. I don't like his attitude. I don't like his attitude, right. and he's he's riding uh, his boy's coattails to try to get on the show too, which is pretty pathetic. Right. I want to thank the Jews. Look at it. Look at uh, Jojo. This guy pissed off everybody on the show. Number four. I want to thank the Jews. I appreciate the Juicy Seal of approval, and it means a lot that the Jews and Conan, who I've watched since I was a kid, now knows me as Doug Larson's boy. Yep. <laughs> I don't think there was ever a better way to make a debut on the Keeping 100 show. It's obvious that the Jews knows good music as much as it's obvious that Vince Russo's sidekick Jeff Langley is by far the biggest half-wit buffoon simpleton dully, dullyard that I've ever heard on the podcast. Wait, did he say dullard or dullyard? dullyard. He spells D-U-L-L-I-A-R-D. So I guess that'd be dullyard? Yeah, so unfortunately that was he was hitting the grand slam there until he spelled dullard wrong. But okay. <laughs> I hope he made a lot of money from that 13-page ebook and he can find a girl that's... That was, and, I, and he can find a girl less than 14 hours away that will actually sleep with him. Okay. And I got Jeff Lane got dragged into this. Too. Oh, that's great. <laughs> it's, it's it's awesome. very, uh, it seems like his accuracy on, on certain things is off, but that accuracy seems like laser, laser accurate and satellite guided. I think that's very disrespectful to Jeff Lane. Okay, number five. Kevin Gill. How does he find time to carry his Conan's and the Insane Clowns Fosse's bags at the same time? Maybe in translation, should... how does Kevin Gill work with so many Wait, iconic can... people in entertainment while I write letters to him? Let, 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 let me finish this, and you can categorically point out the things he said. Let okay. me finish the paragraph, okay? Maybe paragraph. we all should have... Well, it's, just, it's, a, he, it's five, point, five points. He has a paragraph for each one. Maybe we all should have chipped in to buy KG that plane ticket to Japan and then leave him there. I'm honestly glad he wasn't there to judge my music because, because between ICP and his out-of-date quote-unquote street lingo, he's a musical taste of a teenage virgin. On the other hand, maybe listening to some Mickey Scars music will get him and Jeff Lane vagina for the first time in years. Okay, so what do you think about that? The, it's just – it's so stupid I could barely even classify it. Uh, I have no taste for music. Well, look – uh, I don't know how many video game soundtracks I've put together and how many bands I'm I'm associated with or have been associated with. Uh, you could ask Conan's boy, uh, Damien Abraham, about my pedigree in hardcore music. And, and in other words, when uh, Vicky, Vicky Scares or whatever gets on my level, then I'll be happy to, to consider some of their criticism. But until then, you know, I guess just keep sending in your cards and letters to ki100questions at gmail.com. I don't carry anybody's bags. And um, right. step up your game. You know what I'm I mean? Gonna, it's I'm not gonna, us. It's you, brother. I'm going to do this. Okay. I'm going to read the final note, the final line here. This more? And because he was so disrespectful to so many people in this, in this email, <laughs> myself and, and myself and them included, I'm going to beep out the, the, this, the one of the, we're going to, we're going to beep out the, one of the parts. You know, which part? Yeah, okay? I know which one. Yeah. Right. On that note, I thank Conan and Hooven too for listening to my music on the show and check more out at if you want to hear more. Thanks again, Nikki Scars, a.k.a. Doug Larson's boy. Tremendous. We might have to bring him on the train wreck show, too. Yeah, possibly, right? Jesus. Yep. Yeah. Please keep sending uh, wrestling-themed music uh, to, uh, to the juicy seal of approval. All right, man. So uh, that's the intro part of the show. Enjoy the rest of the show on Keeping It 100. Boom. All right, so let me ask you a question. What set you off last week? Because all of a sudden, the, 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 the sea was calm, and then you just went on a verbal tirade on our boy KG. What, what set you off? I got a – listeners of the show are sending me these screenshots of his tweets talking about me. Right. And I, I may or may not have had a little alcohol influence in me, and so I just got, kind of got PO'd and made a video. Right. And uh, but what was it that he was saying about you? So I mean, like he was still like uh, I don't know, egging you on, or was he shoot, sh throwing shade, or what was going on? What, 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 
what was it about? Yeah, I'd have to find the exact tweet because I don't want to misquote it, but it was, you know, just Jeff Lame or this or that or something. I don't remember exactly what so it was. So it affected you so much to make a video and you can't even paraphrase it for the sake of a show. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember what it was, but I know it was about me. <laughs> awesome. Deep thoughts. Thanks for the insight. But Jeff, so so um but what what made you mad that he kept attacking you after he wouldn't go on the show or that he kept attacking you when or what like what got you mad? Yeah, the fact that he I mean, I don't know him. I don't know you, Kevin, and he doesn't know me. You know, but because of a a tweet, he started coming after me and I didn't understand it, so I fired it back. But, but a mark. I'm a mark. Okay. Let yeah, because you your your worldview and perception is so shallow and limited, and I'm not even trying to to be rude to you. Your whole imagined war with me starts because we talked about an embarrassment of a book that you wrote, and we did it in a fun spirit in the way we keep it 100, and all it does is put attention on your product that you're trying to sell and you have a trailer for. You took it down after we talked about it. The moment our episode came out – you took it down. Yeah, people and I told tweet- you I'm exactly not done yet. I'm almost why. done, though, and then you can speak. I said uh, people kept tweeting me asking where is this video because we promoted it all throughout the episode. I want to know this. I want to know why, why – I have to ask later why Kevin blocked him on Twitter, but why – if Kevin blocked him on Twitter, why he continues to uh, continues to address the issue? Be- okay, one, if someone's going to have some like 13-year-old girl meltdown and tweet me 500 times a day about like childish shit – then I'm going to block them because I don't want to read their stupidity. And that's what I did in Jeff's case. And secondarily in Jeff's case, I get tagged on things or whatever. So I don't even see what it says, but I just see there's tweets going on and people be like, oh, this nerd that Vince Russo feels sorry for and gave an opportunity for to be on a show one day a week. And that's his entire life's work and output constantly talks about you on some show. So it's like every once in a while, I might have a thought on the matter. You know what I mean? Hey, lames catch feeling. I have flights to catch. You know what I mean? So to me, it, it's... Bro, there's some real heat going on here because that's the most anti-PMA thing I think I've ever heard you say. <laughs> that's true. There's no doubt about that. People well, yeah, don't I mean, understand what it, PMA is. He blocked me after three three tweets. So don't get it twisted. Three tweets, he blocked me. And uh, it was no need right... to attempt to use hip-hop slang, my friend. You'd be much better off just speaking in your own comfortable vernacular. Yeah, you're right. I'm in the presence of a real OG, so I shouldn't try to, you know, trample on your ground here because well, God knows, God knows, you may, you may pull, a, pull a water pistol more on me, buddy. About the free podcast you're on, you know what I mean? Yeah, you might pull a water pistol on me, so I'm a little, I'm a little nervous here. I tweeted like, you three times. I mean. Okay, I, listen, dude. The point is, you did not tweet me three times before I blocked you. You tweeted me a ton of times for no, days at a time. Like you're uh, insane. An you're thing. insane. That's a total lie. That is an absolute lie. If I could actually see your tweets, I would prove it, but I'm blocked. That is an absolute lie. It was three tweets. I told you. Maybe it was four. Like you live in the past, so I, I don't want to see your dumb shit on Twitter months ago, and you're still Dude. talking about it. I have other stuff I have to do. You Again, don't know I, anything about me. You don't know anything about me. statement that completely covers everything, and you don't even have one small pebble to throw against, like, a Great Wall of China-size blockade that now stands in front of you. You've said your piece. Thank you. Good day, sir. Yeah, that makes no sense. Like, you were the one who attacked me. So you tell me why you're attacking me, and I'll tell you why I was retaliating to you. Coincidentally took down a video. I recommend that everyone listening read Jeff Lane's, I believe it's a 28-page pamphlet written by a 38-year-old virgin, and it's a very simplistic, almost Dude, you are so petty. You are so petty. How old are – listen, you, you want to make fun of my age. And, and, Jeff, and Jeff's but how old he didn't write it when he was 38, he's, he wasn't a virgin. Yeah, so that's yeah. Just so, like, how old that. are you that you're throwing, like, virgin as insults? Like, dude, you are so childish and petty. So you want to come at me. Talk to Vince Russo, your boss, on the podcast you're on one day a week because he feels sorry for you, and ask him why he calls you the 38-year-old virgin on his show and does it on a daily basis or whatever. On a it's entertainment, basis. dude. Do you get worked by every fucking podcast you listen to? On the show and just obliterated you, grinded you into a paste. Do you understand entertainment? And now Do you he- understand it? To do oh again, please t- 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 tell me about your resume, Jeff. Besides your failed um, articles on the horrors of meth, besides your failed comic book spec scripts, tell me something that you've done, dude. Show me, show me something that you've done that gives you any ground to criticize anybody. Get I've never criticized you. Point on the scoreboard of life, brother. Get a point on the scoreboard and then try to keep the momentum going. What would you like to know about me? 
since since you are the most successful person ever, what would you like to know? Where have I said I've done anything in the entertainment business besides work on the brand in my book? <laughs> how, okay, how do you tell me what a book is? How do you define a book? Um, it's something you write that people could buy. But let's go deeper than that, Jeff. Let's get like into the like the depths of the ocean with a thought. A book. At what? What's the difference between? Uh, a pamphlet and a book or an article and a book or like in some say, cases, a letter. What about like, a, the difference between a letter, a long letter and a book? Like you're trying to insult me by saying pamphlet. I called it a pamphlet way longer than you did. The point of this is I sent this book to both these guys, 28 pages. Are you going to cut me off or can I finish? Can I finish? If someone told you, hey, I'm, if can Jerry I Fuller was like, hey, I'm writing a can book. I finish? And they handed like, you like you 28 pages. Let, 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 Kevin, let him, Kevin, let him finish. Kevin, like, let him finish. You're, you're not you funny. But, but here's the problem, dude. I, I never like got hired for a book deal. I'm going to write this huge, long book. I sat down and, and I wrote a 28-page promo. Because that's how it works. You get hired for the book deal first. Can I finish? Like, seriously, dude, you're supposed to be in the podcasting business. I'm a guest on the show. No, you no you're like supposed finish. to be in the podcast no, business. No, let me tell you something. Podcasting business. I can I'm, use I'm, my I'm own I'm sure you'll edit this out. I'm sure you'll own edit this show. out. You know what I mean? My own thing has its own value. I'm Bro, let him, let him, let him talk, talk, Kevin. But bro, I can let him talk. Him let him talk. But let him. T- Here's the thing, bro. I, I think you come off, and I don't know if I'm wrong, Disco. When you do that, you come off as like condescending. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Oh, he's condescending let, against let, some let asshole. Him. Does just let him talk, talk bro. Just, me, just fucking let, let him talk. Guy. You know, let's let him. You know, let's hear what he has to say. I've said my piece. Like I'm not interested in hearing him anymore. This. Well, I want to hear him. Well, can I hear him, or are you going to decide who I listen to? Go ahead, listen. Go ahead, Jeff. Anyway. So this is the deal. I never sat down to write a novel. I didn't sit down to write this big research book. I wrote a promo, an actual promo. And you know what? And somebody said, you know what? Why don't you just publish that? It doesn't matter how long it is. You can make it cheap and you can put it on Kindle. And I said, fine. And you know what? I sent the book to Glenn and I sent it to Conan. And I guarantee you, listen, guys, you plan on reading it, whether you do or not, I don't know. But if it was 200 pages, are you going to read it? No, no. Exactly. Who wants to read that about a restaurant? I had a 28 page thing. That's all it took to say. It's the too long, didn't read type of uh, society. So I really, it doesn't bother me how long it is. If you don't want to read a 28 page book, then don't buy it. It's not an insult to me. To so down. Jeff, that, what are the, what are, um, so there is no chance of getting a diss rap out of this. I mean, there, there's always a chance of everything. I'm not here to try to escalate this further. Yeah, if, I if, am. I, I, I wait a tell. minute. I, I want you to. I want you to <laughs> I do tell. this rap. Yeah. Anything? Any else before uh, Jeff leaves, or anything you want to say, Jeff, before you leave, or anything anybody wants to say? No. You know. I mean, I, I don't have a problem being a man and apologizing to Kevin for the video, and I I kind of want to take it down after talking to him. Um, I'm not proud of it. You know. I I don't I don't come on here trying to just be an a hole. And taking shots at people. I felt like that I was being attacked. And whether I was or wasn't, that's why I reacted the way I did. So if I wasn't, then I apologize. But if I was, then that's why I reacted the way I did. I, I don't think I'm a hateful person. I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I That's like, Conan, I thought you were upset with me. And I just didn't understand until we talked about it. And everything was cool. So I don't have a problem manning up. What would have been your favorite guest on the Russo brand show since you've been there? Your five uh, favorite guests? Um. Well, I mean, I wasn't on them, so, but uh, the, the five favorite guests that Vince had, well, I got to be politically correct here, so we'll say Glenn, Conan. No, um, you don't have to. Go ahead. <laughs> Even though it's true. Yes, absolutely. Um, he's had some good conversations. I thought the one up with Buff Bagwell right now was really good. Um, oh, got, yes. Yeah, that's a real good one with Buff. Um, the Shawn Michaels one was really good because it got into the mind of a, of a guy that was very success, successful while Vince was the head writer and what that person, you know, you know, thinks about it. And right. then, um, you know, there was the the conversation with Buff that hasn't finished yet, but they kind of get into why – there was issues with Vince and, and that's a different side of the coin. So I like hearing both sides of the coin, but um, there, we got a lot of archives up on the YouTube. You can just go to Russo's brand.com. They're all up there. All right, Jeff. Well, man, thank you for being on the show and thank you for keeping it 100 and say, what's up to Vince Russo for us. Boom. Well, dude, thanks for the invite guys. Appreciate it. All right. Be cool. Is there any chance he's going to end up on the Kevin Gill show? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just only slightly warming up to the idea of Cyrus coming on. <laughs> Jesus. Um, well, I'll give him his credit because at, uh, because he apologized. You know what I mean? And uh, that that's. He, a, but a, you didn't seem to accept it. 
Well, I just didn't say anything, but that doesn't mean I didn't accept it. You know what I mean? Uh, it was unexpected, and I, again, I give him credit for that. Bro, can you believe this guy had the balls? The message, yeah, I'm, I'm going to bury him myself. But he had, he had the balls to ask okay. Joseph to see if we would either, either pay him or give him some swag. Are you what? serious? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll pay all of for that. <laughs> What's good, guys? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you call? It? We don't do uh, video on here, though. You want me? To, I'll call you back, and we can just do. Uh, we're just doing audio. This has a scepter decline on. I think I just declined it. Oh really? Okay. Never mind. Go ahead then. <laughs> but are you sure that that your chatterbait site? I guess I'm automatically set up for video. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, we because we see your picture, Joe. You have got a profile picture, and it's annoying because it looks creepy. Super <laughs> creepy. <laughs> it's really, really creepy, bro. You I always have like to move look, the windows you, around to close yeah. cover it. <laughs> here's 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 nice. here's what Joe Feeney's picture looks like. Your profile picture looks like you're looking at Chatterbait <laughs> on 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 the screen. Doesn't it really it? It does. <laughs> big smirk, very gleeful. <laughs> That's a great call, and he's happy about it too. What's good, guys? There he is. Okay. Yo, what's up? What's going on, guys? I mitched you. Did you mitch me? Oh, my God. Jeez. <laughs> right off the bat. Right straight off the bat. Jesus. Yeah. Where are you uh, calling from? I'm here at my, uh, my old lady's house, man, just kicking back. No, but where? What What city? Oh, Chico, California. Chico, California. All right. Um, all right. So, yo, uh uh, you're back on the show. Who's your beef with, or what did you want to say, or what's going on? It's an honor, Conan Disco. Uh, thank you guys very much. You know, you you guys are are you guys calling this the train wreck? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, because K KG's about to get railroaded. Okay. <laughs> I mean, here's startlingly you know, accurate I mean, uh, prediction. Yeah. Well, I mean, OG, right? OG Kevin. Yeah, what's the OG stand for? Old geezer. I mean. Wow! Could you should have been. You guys Cody, have you any could, ointment could, for this burn? Cody, you could you could have the you could have the kazoo ready at any any moment, Tony, for, for these uh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Imagine if he didn't have weeks to put together the act. What we'd be getting? Yeah, right. <laughs> no kidding. Okay, so uh, so that's your first thing. Is what does the OG stand for? Old geezer. What else you got? Old geezer, man. I mean, KG should have been fired on the first show. He couldn't even. He couldn't right, even but, plug. But that's that's why I've held it. Podcast. That's why I've held it down well, for it close to fifty episodes right and have my own. Well, no, let, let, let's, let, let's, let's let this guy get these incredible musings in first. All right. So he should have Okay, let's see who's there because you're not. You're not honestly. You 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 started this off pretty weak. Right, you got kazooed right out of the bat, and uh, you're making fun of the OG with a bad joke, and then you said he should be fired, and you haven't given any reason. So let's let's. Uh, what what else you got here? And yeah, well, I so guess if you want to know what the name stands for, let, let okay. him, let, let I was going to just answer his first point, but okay. Well, I was just saying, Disco, he should have been fired after the first episode, man, when you guys had Chris Jericho on here, and KG failed to even plug Chris Jericho's podcast. Okay. Um, so what else? You know what I mean? I mean, the guy's got horrible music taste. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I ICP? Are you kidding me? Eminem for life, bro. Eminem for life. And... I mean, wow. I'm surprised he's not in the hospital from tearing a hamstring from backpedaling on killing the town so bad. Uh, KG's the most desperate guy I've ever met or I've ever seen because, I mean, come on, he's asking. Uh, <laughs> I, this is, this is coming from the guy who sent me, like, probably 50 messages begging to be on my podcast, but I'm desperate. This, wait a second. Yeah, man. So, Mitch, 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 no, Mitch, let me cut you off. Let me cut you off. Okay. Conan, you want here, too? Yeah, I, 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 had, I had to actually answer a phone call, so I okay. missed a well, lot you of this. You missed nothing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mitch, Mitch, you wouldn't, you wait, 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 wait. Before I continue, was there? Did he need to be kazooed for anything so I can do it I'm now? Gonna, I'm going to repeat. I'm going to repeat in summation. Okay, he said okay. this is this is in summation. Mitch, you were very vocal on social media that you you made uh, inflammatory remarks about Kevin Gill. Said you wanted to, we were going to. I guess it was kind of like a mystery. Like you had some type of like maybe some some legitimate beef with Kevin that uh, you guys have past history or something. Oh, yeah, because he put, like, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? All right. They come on the show, okay? And you, so you came on the show and made a bad joke with the Mitch. Did you Mitch me? Okay, that, that was – can you can right. do that again? <laughs> right. <laughs> do you have anything else to add? Let well, me ask uh, you a question, you, Mitch. Did you actually want a payout or yeah, some free yeah. swag for doing this podcast? Yes, yes he did. It, his exact words were he didn't get anything the first time, so he wanted to get something for his second appearance. Like a hoodie or a hat. Okay, yeah, would you accept? Would you accept? All right, would you accept uh, 
KG's PMA or F off shirt. Only so I could alter it and just like make something, uh, make it actually wearable. Like put like PMA sucks or put my logo, Mitch, please, or something over it like you that. Just, but you just basically don't like him. Okay. So, uh, I don't. what, what we can give you, if you don't want that shirt is you can get tea bag by Jojo, the producer. And, uh, on top of that, uh, you could probably get fisted with, you know, those vibrating Hulk hands. Uh, <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> All right. That's the only thing you're going to get from here. It. Maybe a Bukaki face back. But anyways, Mitch, thanks for coming what on. What about a one- ham job? Disco. That's disco. Yeah, disco ain't afraid. I had that sapphires between that's three and That's very disrespectful. And that's only sapphires. And it's very disrespectful. That's I want to sure. come see a disco. I got to come to Vegas and see What, what would happen if Vegas. he showed up? What would he hear, disco? Uh, he's, can I get one guy from uh, the front door to back reception? <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you very much bitch be cool boom yeah guys i know you're limited on time and everything and kg came on here and said i'm not all right so yeah, we I... hit the the toilet so yeah get some bookings in vegas and go see glenn and get some bookings anywhere and go do your thing and you don't have to try to step well, on other people's book- names man, to make a name for yourself you know what i mean there's a whole wrestling world out there that's not booking you and you have the power to change that i think the next well, time I'll you book- see kg you should just stossle him <laughs> Yeah, he, he don't want no man. I would destroy him. But I am booked June tenth for Pro Championship Wrestling in Oroville. Booked June twenty fourth for WCWF and June thirtieth the House Cat. So busy month, man. Very busy. I have my own podcast as well. And uh, love you, Conan. Much respect to you, Disco KG. Cool. Suck my dick. Because I don't know if you, Ricky Hustle is actually not his name, so that's strange. I got to. Well, of course. Oh, not. here we go. Okay. Rick. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Ready. Would you have to see his driver's license? Yeah, yeah. Finch, Rick Fincham. All right, let's see why he calls himself Hustle. Yo, call him that. Disco. <laughs> Ricky Fincham. Yeah. <laughs> what's going on? Yo, what's up? Is this is this Ricky Hustle? This is the Ricky Hustle. The, the Ricky Hustle? <laughs> the Ricky Hustle. Also the third uh, person, like KG. Oh, my God. All right, yo, man, I want to welcome sure. you here to keep it at 100. And uh, KG's over there, uh, DI, myself, and uh, JoJo, the producer on uh, Chatterbait. <clears throat> awesome. Hello, gentlemen. How you doing? Uh, uh, anything you want to say? Or is there a point of contention? Or is there somebody that you want to chop it up with? Or what? Yeah, where to begin, Conan? Yeah. Uh, first of all, you know, I just want to say, you know, hello, KG. It's good to hear my broadcast partner, Wrestle Circus, which is where all this uh, BS went down. And apparently I've just been on this disco list for so long due to my so-called antics with uh, with D.I. And uh, I want to know, is this actually like a list list? Like I hear like I've been on this list since then. Like is this like a physical list? Is this a real thing? Is this like the WWE Hall of Fame where it's all in the mind? I want to know. I've, wrote, I've written – I write down the names on the list every now and then. But if you're on the list, it's not a, a badge of honor. No, I <laughs> – I, I've heard that, you know, and, and who would know more about, a, you know, having a badge of honor or not having a badge of honor than the guy who's done more jobs than anybody. Ooh. And I was watching Breezango the other night and I was thinking, you know, Fondango, how much of is it a wet dream for you every week, Disco, when you hear Fondango, when you see him on your TV? Um, I mean, I'm a fan of Fandango and uh, Tyler Breeze and Breezango is my favorite tag team right now. But honestly, no. And, 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 and I'd like I, to say, I'm gonna let me give a, 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 a just a quick thing, like a like a, like a little preamble before the actual disco list. Road Dog is definitely back on the list. I yeah, had he was to, back. Hundred percent. I, yeah. I know. I know. I put him on it yesterday as soon as the match ended. Where does where does all the heat between you and uh, disco stem from? Um, yeah, let me ask you a question. What what, what compelled you? Because I never met you. Nobody knows you. Uh, nobody really knew you. I'm the best in <laughs> Texas, my friend. <laughs> the best broadcaster, Texas K. Why? What compelled you? Let me see this. Okay, and I'm just. Gonna, you, I'd, I'd like an honest answer. Did you, when you brought my name up on the first Wrestle Circus broadcast, was that was that on instruction on uh, from Kevin, or was that just on your your own call? You just decided to uh, to try to like uh, discredit my good name on that broadcast on your own. Your good name, yes. Uh, Kevin Gill did have a brief conversation. He's like, look, you know, we're talking about keeping 100. Disco was too cheap. You know, he's on a doorman salary. I get it, you know, to pay for the Russell Circus broadcast. And I just thought that was kind of funny because, like most fans, you know, I hadn't, I didn't even know you were still wrestling or, or still even alive. So we decided to have some fun. 
and uh, and put that out there. But no, Kevin Gill did not per se tell me what to say or do. I just thought I'd have some fun. But he to, did. Kevin, he Kevin did just Kevin, mention. Kevin, that Kevin, Kevin did mention that you didn't want to Kevin. pay for the paper. That yeah. th- th- that part is true. I did mention that because uh, he we were talking about the show and he asked if uh, Disco would be watching. And this was at the time when the New Japan pay per view uh, discussion was uh, was contemporary. Right. So my my point is though, the, for this specific show, this is interesting that you would you would bring that you brought that up as a contention, as a point of contention that I didn't want to pay for the pay per view. Okay. However, the next time that you did this broadcast, you actually got us a free link to to view this show. Did you not? Yes. Okay, so I got you. And I went to the Wrestle Circus <clears throat> management and requested an official viewing link for you guys to be able to see the show. Okay, let me see this, Ricky. Hosea. Which I feel like most people can see the difference between that and then just you know what I'm saying, like kind of boosting the signal of bootleggers and you know not supporting wrestling, okay. which is important. Um, well, we're well, we're supporting wrestling right now because we're giving you a, a forum here for a um to Rick uh, Finchman. A, <clears throat> to Rick, yeah, to, to Rick, <laughs> to, to, to guy that, uh, that I guess is embarrassed his real name and had to change his name to uh, to Ricky Hustle. Um, <laughs> given, given him an open forum to promote himself, okay, and he's uh, made some really weak attempts to try to bury me on the show. But uh, do you have any upcoming shows, Mr. Hustle? Uh, I do. I have the Wrestle Circus coming up this weekend. I have at the uh, following month, I have VIP Wrestling, which is based out of Dallas, which are some of the biggest shows, you know, in the whole Southern Hemisphere, of course. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to be great on all two, those. You got, you got two. You got two. You got two shows. Oh, I got lots of shows. Those are just the biggest ones. Of course, there are other ones where you may not be as familiar. Being here in Texas, of course, I was lucky enough to meet Conan a few weeks ago at Martinez Entertainment, which is some of the best lucha lucha libre action in Texas. Conan, what Conan, was your what? opinion of Ricky Hustle when you met him? Uh, he immediately. Um, uh... Uh, what, what do you call this? He was a very friendly guy. Uh, he lost a lot of points claiming KG with his friend. <laughs> and um, uh, and then he immediately buried you, so he got over with me again. Okay. And um, I think he's, he's, he's got talent. You know, he's got talent. I think he's, he's going he, he's gonna to be doing things. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If he can, I, I will be uh, honored if Ricky Hustle does uh, – does make it big in the professional wrestling business to think that um that by discrediting my good name, we decided to give him a rub on this show and right. introduce him to our hundreds of thousands of people that listen to this each week. And Ricky Hustle, I would like to wish you success in the wrestling business if you ever make it. And if not, then uh, I would just say that you probably deserved it for discrediting my good name. And I like the we like to give everybody a parting gift. So okay. Jojo, the producer. Uh, will toss your salad, and then he will give you the Chinese tension ball massage. Do you know what that is? No, I do not. Okay, have you ever seen the executives when they, they're stressed out and they roll those balls between their fingers? All to right. Release, to release tension? Sure. No. Okay, well, JoJo will lube up your nutsack and roll oh, your nuts no. along his fingers. That is a <laughs> Chinese tension ball massage from your friends at Keeping It 100. Boom. And I am a certified masseuse. There you go. There you go. He's certified. <laughs> so um, uh, I'm not saying that I went on that show when it was like something I would put on my uh, demo hey, reel. That's like this is one of my all time greatest appearances. What happened? That's all that that it is. So you can I give smoothed me out a lot of the. So you can uh, give smooth- me examples, bro. You got owned. Take I smoothed out some of the rough road that uh, the disco so and going to Calgary and getting the guy in your podcast that smoothed it out. No, by dealing with the settling the beef, there was a there was all this shit going down with Disco and Cyrus, and now everything is totally cool. Yes, the guy keeps you settle that beef, and you yes, he keeps insulting you. Oh, look at my it big came, man just grew up now. Or look at the little Mark, he still buries you, bro. It went from being oh. nonstop internet drama to Cyrus offering to face Disco in an but octagon no type fighting setting. You, what's he gonna fight if you're not fighting back? He just said, "Well, this guy's a, you know, he came on here, he got destroyed. What do I continue for? You didn't fight back. Bro, bro. That's why he said, he said, you go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that's an insult or, or, or the, the uh, statement? The response? statements that the statements that Disco made were erroneous and they were attributed to me. You know what I'm saying? So I corrected that matter. If you and it was erroneous and. Cyrus what made he made fair points about things that you guys had said about him, and I, I agreed with him. What was that erroneous? What he said about him? Yeah, what, what was, was erroneous? erroneous? Uh, 
you called them, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to repeat the word, but you know what you called them. Cocksucker. Yeah. Cocksuckers. Yeah. That's, yeah. And, that's then you made it, and then you made a statement where it made it seem like they could be cocksuckers. You didn't come out and say it, but you, like, alleged it. And yes, bro, and that was a whole thing. I asked I if it was on point or disrespectful. And for that, I apologize <laughs> I because asked, I, I, I should have, I should have been a better person and, and tried to help resolve it one step sooner than I did. But I made that what mistake. You, and then I, I, I moved forward with clean hands. What do you think you're going to do to resolve here? Well, like I said, I don't want to see you get, you get, bro, attacked those guys, get those over, guys uh, those have guys professional guys fights. Shine, you know what I'm saying? Those guys don't understand. Those guys need to know their role and shut their mouths. Okay. Because. Dude, they are we're the flagship show on this network, okay? Our numbers are very, very, very strong, and they are trying to use us to get a rub. And so when they bring you on the show and belittle you, okay, that like that like empowers them and makes them feel more important than they actually are. All right, because their 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 show is uh, teetering on uh, on relevance compared to our show, right? So when you go on their show and 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 let them the, like humiliate you, like like, <laughs> like they did, okay? That What's so funny about this is this is the exact opposite logic you guys use in the Jeff Lane incident. In the Jeff Lane incident, I was wrong for being on the offensive, shutting down an idiot, and burying them until they went away. But on the flip side, when I hear someone out, when I listen to the opposing side, then I'm I'm an idiot. So it's really just a matter of no matter what I do, you guys are going to talk shit. So that's why it doesn't really matter. You between you and Jeff Lane is you guys had a beef. You guys didn't really have a like like so much of a beef. You just you went on there and just like like allowed yourself to just get like like uh, jobbed out. You know they, what? What point did Cyrus make that was not correct on that show in regards you to th- just, things that you said? You should have just apologized on Twitter. What did you have to go in the show for? Say sorry, I was misspoken. Just tweet out some little, little, little quick little thing and then that'd be done. You know, like <laughs> here's what he's gonna do. He's gonna show up at Cyrus's doorstep on on Father's Day, and like <laughs> mowers lawn and cooking food. Says that that says they hear hear. Cyrus says, "I just happened to be in town." Who's your daddy? <laughs> I love these fantasies you guys have. We should get this animated. Oh my god! Um, all right. Yeah, so I have a question. When you, let me ask you a question. Did you yeah. post that tweet? Uh, did you get arrested? Uh, can we talk about this off the air? Why? Why? <laughs> what did you post it on your Facebook page? <laughs> exactly. What happened? You didn't say that. I, I, I sent it on the text. He posted. He posted a picture. I guess he had the uh, the cannabis conference. Oh, I thought. So, I thought that was a fuck. That's is that, that a word or a shot? shot? I thought that was a uh, like somebody. No, no, was... no, no, no. That's. A, I think that. I think they raided the the, the, the bro. They had a they had a weed festival, right. or like a cannabis conference or something. And I guess the cops probably show up and like you know. Probably just like like because it's a bunch of people smoking. We probably, it's probably like illegal Bro, stuff. Bro, this going is on. hilarious. I'm looking at it now. It says when you get booked and it's not for commentary. Because <laughs> <laughs> they made a meme out of it right away, right? Well, wait but wait a minute. This can't but, be true. It says Gotham Police Department. Is it Gotham? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. It says Gotham Police. But look at but look at what it says, though. The SC. What, what was the uh, the initials there? That looks like a comic con or some type. Maybe. No, no, no. It was, it was the actual. It was an actual cannabis festival. That's why I was thinking that, like, you know, I, I asked you if it was if it was a shoot because <clears throat> I don't know if like Gotham. There's there's a actual Gotham County or something. No, not Gotham. See, so you know, say like like because it's Frisco, and so, so I decided no. So that's what I was, was asked: is that a shoot or not? You know, because like you actually made the thing look realistic because the thing is like I was like, what's the SCWO that thing? And I looked at the initials. It was a cannabis conference. Or cannabis thing, like 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 that they had, and I was thinking like, wait, but the but the booking picture looked weird because it looked like a photo shoot instead of a booking, which is why I was wondering like that. Well, is that a shoot or not? You know, sometimes stuff happens, but uh, we've all, uh, you know, Shane Helms one time punched Chris Jericho in the face in the back of a cab, and you know, here we are. We've all got uh, pictures, big show. Myself, I'm sure Conan. Bro, I've got been it. arrested. Who gives a shit? What is this about? I don't think it is arrested. I think they. Pro- I bet you they probably had a thing there at the at the thing. We could take a picture like you had a mugshot. <laughs> right. Is that more accurate, Kevin? No, of course. That's why I popped when Conan said that to you a minute ago. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 can we right, talk right. about that off the air? I should know. This is the only thing this guy would be <laughs> arrested, jaywalking, some shit. Let me see. They basically just – when I say go in on me, they just had – like if you went through the transcript, so to speak, of everything we've ever said about them and everything, they just would pick one little tiny defect in the armor to be like, oh – 
what about this exact tiny, tiny point? And it's like lawyers, the way they would have it formulated You're when you ask that very way, specific bro. question. Right, but what I'm saying is they, they hit on the spot. So I'm like, damn, like what they broke down, I felt like I can see why they felt that I was uh, disrespecting them. You know what I mean? And so what did they make you apologize for? For like what Disco said, basically like me trying to be in the middle, but baby face all sides, basically. Right. And they thought that was an inappropriate thing to do. And you know what I mean? They're uh, – you know what I'm saying? I, all I can do is take that lesson, you know? Yeah. I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> <I'm tremendous. laughs> uh, so I didn't feel like it was as brutal. I don't know what they did in editing. Oh, my God. Whatever. Are you serious? They, maybe they took out the nice parts. There was a few <laughs> just, nice parts. Let's just go right to it then. Let's just listen to it. And now back to Killing the Town. Oh, uh, what a knock. Cyrus, I believe we have uh, Retro ECW to do, but you wanted to uh, bring in Kevin Gill first. Yeah, that's right. You know, you don't want to only have top talent on the show. Sometimes you got to have the end. <laughs> so here you go. All right, let's get Kevin Gill on the line. Okay, well, really excited to have uh, one of the people from the quote-unquote flagship show of the Jericho Network. Not too sure about that part, but uh, Kevin Gill, double OG, as they say, uh, from the Conan Show. Kevin, welcome. Good to see you. Wow, great to be here, man. It's an honor to be on keeping it. Oh, I was going to say keep just, it let me, Yeah, of course. You know, you know, don't don't worry, Lance. We'll edit that out. Now, listen, I just want to get right into it. And I've been on record as saying I, I, I think I've actually put you over. You know, I've compared you to one of the top pop stars of the, the 90s, Moby, who with whom you bear a striking resemblance. And I have Mo- tried. Moby also has a connection to the hardcore scene, so perhaps we're connected in more ways than one, although I am not Moby. You never know. And I've, I've also put over the fact that you enjoy your your fair trade tofu and everything else. So, you know, we were doing this now. But I got to say, and normally my irritation with your show and with Conan's show uh, stops and ends at the more on Glenn Gilberti. But um, this week I actually heard, and I, this is a, the part, of, and I really went hard on you a little while ago for abusing the Jabron from Russo show, but... This is a part, Kevin, that I think I have a problem, and, and the problem is you're a bit of a spot picker. Um, you kind of ride the fence, you kind of you know blow with the wind or whatever. And what I heard this week, and we, we we're going to play the audio right now. But see, what happens is this is this says things that are attributed to me. This all goes goes back to a, a gentleman named Frank uh, or Jed Frankfurther on uh, Twitter. He tweeted that uh, K- KG and Disco teamed up to battle the suckers. Lance Storm and Cyrus. And then I said, damn, dropping the CS bomb on Lance Storm and Cyrus. Is it very disrespectful? On point. And that that's what uh, Cyrus that responded to, prepare to be stossled. So just, I want to clarify, I didn't say I would never call Lance Storm or, or uh, Cyrus suckers. I don't well, necessarily think down, What you're doing few. is you're backing down from a fight. Bro, you, you yeah. did kind of bury them, and now you're like, like, oh, no, I'm saying, all I'm saying is you're, you're I, stand by everything I said, but I never call. I wouldn't call them a sucker. To me, that's going too well, far. That's like saying, <clears throat> are you a hoe or not? Uh, say the message again that you tweeted them. Dropping the CS bomb on Lance Storm and Cyrus over huge. Very disrespectful or on point. Okay, maybe that isn't like a sucker punch, but you basically pushed a guy. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like um, it was uh, a slap. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you, you're not coming out and saying it, but come on. Well, first of all, if he wants to drive to Vegas, right. he can try to stop him. Well, not to mention, too, Lord <laughs> Cyrus went on that. his podcast and is trying to talk about how they're going to na- rename the best the, uh, the Dave Meltzer Best Announcer Award after him. He <laughs> thinks he's that good. He, he wasn't even like nominated. The, yeah, he thinks he's like the gold standard for announcing <clears throat> in a wrestling day. So there you are. Effectively, Disco's trying to stir it up and say that, you know, I should be replaced on New Japan Pro Wrestling, which is a joke. Um, and you make the comment that, well, and he's talking about how I have stated publicly, which I have, that Dave Meltzer in 2017 will have to rename the Announcer of the Year Award the Don Callis Award because I will blow everyone away and be the top color commentator uh, in, in pro wrestling when they do those awards for 2017. And you made the comment you know, referencing the 2016 results and saying, well, he wasn't even nominated, you know, which may have been a throwaway comment. But, Kevin, I want to ask you something. You follow football. You guys do your little segments, sports stuff. If you had a running back who hadn't been playing on a team for, say, the 2016 season, would it be an intelligent thing to say to say, well, he didn't even come in the top 10 in rushing this year? I would remind you. 
that I didn't start being a commentator until 2017. So how in the world could I have been nominated in 2016? Right. It, it, it wouldn't be possible. Correct. Kevin, I think statements like that really, really affect your credibility. Yeah, and, and that's a, a misstatement by, by me in, the, in that moment. So I do apologize. And it's those sorts of statements that I think like you're getting caught up in this BS with disco. And True. then and then you posted a private text message conversation that I had with you because I knew you were concerned that I was I, I had threatened to stossel you. And I was trying to alleviate your concerns and say, look, my my issue is really with Glenn. And I made some statements privately to you um, that Glenn had from a professional perspective cross the line. And that if Glenn shows up uh, in Los Angeles, which we know he won't because he's gutless, um, that I was going to take care of business. And you posted that publicly. (laughs) (laughs) I just felt like I want you you and Disco, you know, Disco has what we call unique sensibilities. Uh, He's an idiot. (laughs) You're doing your thing right now. In other words, you work in the business. So that at least puts you at a, at a different level than Disco. And and I wouldn't get arrested in this business. No pun intended. (laughs) And I I have respect for what you guys in Disco's case have done and and what you do. And once you sent me that message of about, you know, to me, like assaulting Disco to, to that nature, I just felt like, I didn't want to be privy to anything that can turn into a, a crime. I don't want to be involved in <laughs> professional <laughs> fighters. No, 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 no. Um, we all know that I would never put my hands on anyone unless it was self-defense. So I think you're sort of <laughs> a little bit. And but but this is my point, Kevin. You can't be halfway pregnant, as they used to say back in the day. You can't be half into this thing. You know, all of a sudden it starts to get a little bit, you know, you're all over it, calling us the C word and everything else. But as soon as it gets a little dodgy, you're like, whoa, whoa, backpedal. Oh, I don't want any of this. I don't want any of this. You know, this is really unfortunate. Uh, you're jumping on the bandwagon of this New Japan thing. Let me tell you. So Disco comes out, as we heard, and he says, I'll face Cyrus in Los Angeles if it gets booked on the New Japan show. If I went to Gato and I asked him to put Disco Inferno on a New Japan pro wrestling show, I would get <laughs> laughed out of the booking room. So we all know that. So I've got a challenge for Disco, and I'm going to get to it later in the show. I'm going to close the show with it that I don't think he is going to be able to refuse because I'm just interested in ending this once and for all because unfortunately he's such a pathetic troll that what he's doing is – he keeps ramping it up, and now he's killing people's business. Jericho's banned him from going on other people's shows. You should just fire him. Right. But Kevin, I, I think you need to take care of your own business and not just follow along with Disco and perpetuate the abusive language that was used towards Lance. And I know, Lance, you're very upset about it. Yeah, and this is where, up until recently, I didn't have an issue with, with, with you, Kevin. <clears throat> but we're even getting it now. You seem to be... That perpetual baby face that baby faces every side of a story looking for pl- plausible deniability. And the C word that he mentioned was actually CS. He called us, I'll bleep it out in a miss second, but it, he called us fuckers. When it brought up on your show, it's like you deny saying it, but you keep pointing out that it was said. And it's you're the locker room stooge shit disturber in this situation. And, and that's where I've got an issue. That, you know, we've been watching our retro ECW shows, and you're basically what Cyrus was as a gimmick in ECW during the Taz Carino feud. And obviously, since it's a crying wimp, it's like Disco is Carino, and you're stirring it up going, hey, Taz, did you notice what Disco said? And then you're siding with Disco when he calls you on it. I think you either need to be a on the sidelines, not in this, or pick a damn side. Right. Uh, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a very fair statement. I, I think that where I went wrong or where I think I'm being misunderstood because your read on it is completely accurate. My, when I sent the tweet out, there was a tweet sent by a listener that had my name on it and Disco's name on it and referred to calling you guys the, that name CS. And I didn't know if you guys had heard the show and I didn't want to be attributed to those comments. So I did say, Hey, is this, is Disco calling them this? Is that accurate or is it very disrespectful? thinking more people would choose very disrespectful and having recently seen Lance's survey about whether Disco was a dweeb or not, I was trying to continue that tradition, but I, I could see how, how it came off, and yeah, it definitely wasn't 
uh, the right way to play it. But my goal was the same as it is now. I don't want to be involved in stossling. I don't want to be involved in uh, But here's the assaults. thing, Kevin. But what you're doing, and, I, and I, Conan points it out all the time, you're not a wrestler. You're a right. fan. You're not part of business. So you want to interject yourself into the business and think you're working by doing what you just said with the tweet. But then as soon as things get too wrestling for you, too real, you want to step back and be a fan again. To Lance's point, you have to pick a side. Now, I think you're an intelligent guy, and I know that you're probably in a difficult position sometimes. But I want to ask you a couple of questions, and maybe we can forgive all this other stuff. If you would just answer me honestly and stop thinking about whether you're going to be over with this guy or over with that guy. Because I can tell you from personal experience, so can Lance, so can Conan. You're never going to be liked by everyone in this business. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Okay. Would you agree that it is not just improbable, but impossible that anyone would hire the Disco Inferno to do anything in the wrestling business at a high level in 2017? With so much going on in wrestling this year, last year I would have agreed with you 100%. I almost feel like... There, I think there's at least a 20% chance of that happening this year, which is up up maybe 20% from last year. You mean like as a stooge or a, like a back rub guy or something like that? <laughs> I don't know. I, I could almost see him in a similar role as the role he had in, in WCW. Like a, I don't know what you oh, would call that. It was called killing the company. So you're, you're thinking that someone maybe who wants to kill a company might bring him in to do it. Well, I could see that, Lance. Yeah, everyone needs a, the comic relief, but I, I think um, there, there's more people doing that now. We don't need Disco back at it. That's true. Well, I, <laughs> you know, basically, I feel like that we are owed an apology from you for perpetuating this awful verbal assault. And that's really what it is. It's a form of assault. It's a form of bullying. You perpetuated it. You say you didn't mean to. You besmirched my good name by talking about how I wasn't uh, nominated for an award that I couldn't have been nominated for. So I think it would be fair to say that you owe us an apology and then we can call this square. Well, I mean, what can I say? You know what I mean? Uh, I apologize, guys. My, my intentions were good, but I realized that, uh, I don't know, maybe I have to do some self-inflection here. Maybe I am a bit of a, a shit disturber. Perhaps I need to, to realign my tofu. You know what I'm saying? Well, and I, and I think that you like to talk about PMA, positive mental attitude, all the time. But when you're perpetuating this stuff and you're being a cyber bully, in a sense, I don't see wow. that that's positive mental attitude. Now, all I'm going to say is there's two ways we can look at PMA, Kevin. One is the way we're talking about now, positive mental attitude. And the other one, and this is not a threat, this is just a comment, is private medieval ass kicking. Damn. Because that's what's going to happen to Disco or anyone else who talks this type, type of stuff about Lance and I. Because unlike Disco, who can't get a job in this business to save his life, Lance and I are working in the wrestling business. So it doesn't take a lot for us to get on an airplane. Right. I'm going to have a special offer for, for Disco at the end of the show. So, Kevin, anything you'd like to plug about yourself? Please do. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity to <laughs> the air, guys. And instead of having animosity and or worse behind the scenes, I'm glad we could just uh, put it out there. And I thank you for the time and the opportunity. I invite everyone to check out the Kevin Gill Show every week on audio. That's enough. That's enough. Joe, that's enough. <clears throat> Bro, straight up, uh, I wish they would have caught you on a Wednesday when you used to PMS on me. I, I would have loved to have seen that <laughs> Kevin Gill on that show. But, bro, you got, like, tea bag. They're not just tea bag, like sour cream and chive. You got dirty Sanchez, like they gave you the Hitler and the Hulk Hogan and the Oh, my God. The Dirty Sanchez, you gave him the rusty trombone, and then they gave you a face bath and put it on Facebook. That is what I just heard. It was a prison. Emasculated. I I thought it was a a, a respectful conversation. It was a prison break. A respectful conversation. They buried you for 10 minutes. Remember that? Yeah. Do you remember the mob guy? Still more, way more. Yeah, but I, I can handle myself, and I've got thick skin, and I would never apologize. (laughs) <laughs> I, I believe in this case you, I, would I can't believe them, you bro, apologize but you should, I bet you they would have you know respected Kevin, a lot more you, you need to do this then both of you are left you, you know need to I'm? do this you need to apologize to me because <laughs> you you did the, you do the exact they told they they chastised you 
for doing what you do, which is basically choose both sides, you know, pay, and then basically you just, you kind of like, like, you do what you do. But if you're going to apologize to them for doing that, <laughs> you also need to apologize to me. Yeah. Because I, you do the same thing to me. I disagree. Oh, because my God. They're, if they they're apologize, they were what, what he offended by it. Bro, they were legitimately okay. offended. You're not offended. Okay. You just want an apology. He, what he apologized to them for. Okay, specifically and categorically, they told him he owed them an apology for. Does Kevin owe that same apology to me? Without a doubt, bro. Straight up. It's not, it's not even a close. Joe, our producer, who just sits back there and listens to this stuff and does not even, like, you know, does not choose sides. Does, does Kevin Gill, since he apologized to Lance and, and, and uh, Cyrus, does he owe me an, apologize, an apology for doing the exact same thing to me? When, when did I call you a cocksucker? Asking Joe. I'm just saying, okay, I'm just throwing it out there. Oh, she owe me an apology. I think that would be the only appropriate thing to do right now. Wow. I can't believe okay. it. Okay, Kevin, I think you Why was apologize. it so, wait, wait, why was it so easy for you to apologize on their show after they buried you and taught and feathered you, but no, you think you were DI? I, I don't see it that way. They also had a very specific point that they were 100% right about. Disco has not articulated any any case or point. He's just saying because A, now B. That That does not compute. Bro, you always bury him. Um, I know the word popped I, when they were burying him on the on the yeah, show. Yeah, hundred percent. He was laughing. 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 He was He was He didn't want to. He didn't want to bury me, but he couldn't help it. Yeah. Okay, and because he basically goes, tried, that, he that tried to ignore the question. Last year, zero. Tried to, tried to ignore the question. And basically said, I got like a twenty percent chance of maybe getting a, a rest. Bro, I have a job. <laughs> I'm saying, well, yeah, I, bro, I work in the business as much as Lance Storm does because all Lance Storm does is train guys, and I do too. Okay, so they say that they have Lance Storm work in the business. I do too. I train people too. Okay, so that's like you know, so so that's a uh, that's comical. I mean, that's, so you know, then, that, that, so you, then that, yes, you, Cyrus was wrong. His question to me was, "Do I agree that you have zero percent chance?" And my answer was, "I do not agree. I think you no. have more of a chance than that." No, you said it's 20%, which is 20% more than last year, which meant it was zero the year before. And what's well, 20%? Think, that's that's like nothing. Well, because Bro, no, you never factors, defended there's, there's Disco. Factors, there's why did factors, you go on like, their show? There's factors like Disco. Why did you go, why did you, why did you go on, on other work? Disco, I've heard Disco <laughs> attempt to be booked and not be able to take bookings. The percentage of likelihood for Disco to be working in a bigger capacity in wrestling is not just dictated by someone else's interest in him. It's also dictated by his interest in them. What? It's not just their interest in him, whether a company wants to bring in Look, Disco. Let, let me call Spade a Spade with Cyrus. to be available okay. for them or well, not. He's Cyrus, not really a wrestler Cyrus. anymore. He does something else. I would like to say something, though. I'm a big fan of Lord Cyrus, and I have been on his yacht, and he's a very gracious host. But You've been on his what? On his yacht. Where is it? In Winnipeg? No, in L.A. And it, <laughs> okay. He sometimes right. winters in L.A., his lordship. Never. So no apology for Disco? What would you like me to apologize for, Disco? What what did I what what I mean, happened kind of that I offended you? You throw you throw shade at me, okay? That's like too you vague of an allegation, sir. It's not. You throw shade, hundred percent. I throw. I might. I might crack like, a joke. I might like, crack a they joke. Were, they were insulting me. You were like cracking up and laughing and stuff and everything. So was Bro, you, you were a representative of killing the tank of keeping it one hundred. I wasn't on the show. No, you, but you were you were laughing on the playback. I could hear you. <laughs> I was mostly laughing at you, bro. I couldn't believe that you were like emasculated, dude. You just went in there and just gave yourself up. He didn't you know? even fight. He didn't even fight. Right, bro. He sat there. You sat there. You put your gloves behind. You put your hands nope. behind your back, and you. I think on behalf. Okay, let me. Oh, let me. Got down on your knees. On behalf of hands, you got down on your knees. You put your hands on behind your back and you let them just urinate all over your face. Oh, so that not is true. What, that is hundred hey, percent. I they stood up. I show. stood up for our show and as a representative of our show. That and was very embarrassing for our show. On a mission, on a mission of peace and <laughs> friendship and respect. Okay, got let me ask you. Okay, okay, let's do one thing because he, here's KG's like, and I heard it on the show right now. I heard it on on Don uh, Lord Cyrus show and and Lance Storm. And I've had many battles with you before on the phone, and you always bring this up. Oh, I was misinterpreted. Always people misinterpret you. 
Okay, just to show you, and and if I'm wrong, I'll apologize to you on this show. But if you're wrong, you're going to apologize to Disco. I want everybody that's listening to the show to tell us if he was a good representation of the show or if he got totally buried. Okay, and then Wolf, and then we'll go off of that. Next okay. week, we'll yes. results. Well, I, I okay. thought they they treated me fairly, and and the the po- very specific points they raised, fairly. I felt I was incorrect <laughs> on. Ah! <laughs> 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 I, 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 I don't know if you're in Iran or something. I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm I, in Iran, but still, I don't have to be in Iran to know. Hey, you got dirty Sanchez and hey. um, uh, yeah. Disco, how, how come Conan doesn't have to uh, stand by your side and stand for the show? He he's uh, he got suspicious relationship with Lord Cyrus there on both together. Enemies. Plus, he's this made it very going. clear that he will do whatever he can to bury me. Right. Okay, you on the other hand <laughs> try to like make it sound like, like you're very friendly stuff, but you you backhandedly bury me. You know, <laughs> you 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 are you you are you you're you're a bumpy PMA, but you're a backstabber. Hello. Bro, we do audio. We, don't audio. <laughs> uh, we do audio. All right, can I have my camera on? Is it is it bothering you? Yeah, it does, it's not it bothering is. me. Go ahead, Vince. Do your thing. Okay, all right. You know, yeah, no, no. You're happy it now, bro? Oh, okay. no, actually, that's no, worse. Now I'm unhappy, bitch. Yeah. I like the video. No, no I, guys, I like you, video better. You guys lost out on the video now because he's got a big mouth. Yeah, Bring up what you were bringing off when we were off the air, Disco. Um, when we were off the air? Yeah, the thing about the tweet. Yeah, but bro, what are these people that did? Okay, what was the big deal about the tweet you did last night about Alexa Bliss and all these uh, people got got all uh, uh, all up in their uh, their panties in a water? Well, bro, it's kind it's kind of it's kind of just like uh, you know Benedict Arnold that's sitting there with you guys. Bro, you know, bro, I I I, I may I, I bro, are you, are you referring my, are you referring to KG by the way? Yeah, I am. Yeah, but I, I'll, I'll refer to him as Benedict Arnold during this interview. <laughs> Glenn, terrible. Glenn. Glenn, it's this simple. I'm sitting here. I'm watching the freaking pay-per-view because I got to comment on it, right? So mm-hmm. I like Alexa Bliss, bro. I'm a fan of her. I put her over. So, bro, she's beaten Bailey with this stick. Bro, I make the freaking comment. You ready, bro? Here's my comment. You know, not for nothing, I think I'd let Alexa Bliss spank me with that kendo stick. That was my comment. Bro, the next thing I know, I get 25 emails that I'm a pedophile. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm a pedophile. I'm creepy. I need to cancel my my Twitter account, I, bro. You can't freaking say anything with these snowflake little freaking millennial. I'm I'm so bro. I can't wait till these morons are old enough and it's their turn when they're in charge of this country and I'm long dead. I can't wait, bro. The freaking chaos with these little snowflakes. They, they bro. The world's gonna come to an end. And just like Benedict Arnold there, you know, bro, oh they're, they're, bro, they're, they're so I- quick. Bro, they're so quick to freaking label you something. Oh, you're a racist. No, you're a pedophile. No, you're a sexist. No, you're a homophobe. That that that's the gimmick, bro. And I'm so sick of these freaking people. I make a funny comment about Alexa Bliss, and I'm a pedophile. Meanwhile, she's 25 years freaking old, bro. <laughs> no, yeah, but doesn't no. she play a young girl on the show? What? What what so what what was your viewpoint on that KG? It's that in other words it see it comes off I think a little bit creepy. I have nothing yeah, against yeah, it. Yeah yeah yeah. You know Kevin with all due respect, are you a freaking moron, bro? Do you do you do you really think bro, do you really think I want Alexa Bliss to spank me with a freaking kendo stick you imbecile? It was a freaking joke. That's what I mean, bro. You can't freaking joke anymore. Everybody is so freaking serious god forbid well, maybe you just tell about joke. women maybe just about a few topics like in regards to perhaps race and women and perhaps no, sexual I'm sorry, gender bro. I'm, not, I'm not gonna play by your rules benedict i'll joke about whatever the frig i want to joke about you know you know that's what, what bro? disco said let me tell yeah. you something 
Let me tell you about the late, great Don Rickles, who Don Rickles, who built an entire career of freaking insulting people out of comedy. And, and as, as social, you know, as, as, as the, the landscape changed, Don Rickles never changed his freaking act. And Don Rickles, to the day that he died, said, you know what? If they don't get that it's comedy and if they don't get that I'm saying it in jest, F them. I'm not changing my act. And God bless so, them. He never did. Because that's the thing, Kevin. Guys like you, guys like freaking Ryan Satin are trying to silence guys like me with your freaking snowflake wussy attitudes. And, bro, you're not going to freaking silence me. I'm not going to play by your rules, Kevin. Bro, I'm 56 years old. I don't know how, how old you are. I know I've been around a hell of a lot longer than you. And if you think I'm going to start running and hiding from guys like you because I might say something as a joke that's socially unacceptable, you're out of your freaking mind, bro. Well, none, of that, freaking mind. none of that is what I'm proposing. I was I, All I simply proposed was that, in my opinion, it came off a little bit off. That's all. In your opinion, it was a sense of humor. So that, that's all. Because I'm not- you're, you're one of those guys, just like Ryan Satin, you're sitting there waiting to pounce on anything that anybody said. I didn't. Well, how and did I, I pounce? Uh, did I send a tweet? I did I send a tweet? I, did I, I get a call. Did- I get a call from Glenn. Hey, Vince, listen, there's, there's this jabroni Kevin Gill. He helps us out on the show. Oh, bro, he's he's coming out to Colorado. Would you mind doing an interview with him? I don't know you from Adam, Kevin. And I said, yeah, Glenn, you do a lot for me. Conan does a lot for me. I'd be freaking happy to do an interview with this guy. You come to Colorado, bro, on a freaking Sunday. On a Sunday, I leave my family and I sit there with you for two hours and you get a pretty good idea of sitting with somebody for two hours, what kind of a freaking person they are. You Amen. personally you personally sat there with me for two freaking hours. That then the minute when I'm not there, oh I'm I'm creepy. Oh, I'm a I'm a, I'm a sexist. Oh, I'm a, I'm a homophobe. But bro, give me a freaking but I don't break, I don't say all, I don't say all of this. All, all of those things, and I think I do have a pretty good impression of you from the time that we uh, we talked uh, in, well, I, in Denver. I, bro, bro, if you, if and you I also thought, put over your show a bunch of times. Yeah, if, as you, if you thought for one second that my comment about Alexa Bliss was creepy, then you don't freaking know me at all, bro. Give me a freaking break. Well, just I'm, how, I'm a, how it I'm, comes I'm a 56 year old man, bro. I want to get spanked by a 25 year old. Give me a freaking break. You know what this is? This has been this interview has been like. It's like been the first three minutes of a, of a uh, an Abdul the Butcher match. <laughs> Vince, Vince, Vince has pulled out the fork and it's just like stabbing so, Oh my god! I'm, 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 and it's not just Kevin. You know it's what? We, you know what's the problem? It's who he represents. Bitch. It's who he represents. Conan, we're old school, bro. We've been around. Me, you, and Disco. We know a little bit about life, bro. Then you get these yahoos like Kevin Gill and Ryan Satin who are freaking snowflakes and they get their feelings hurt and oh you're an ist you're an ist bro you when you guys learn the first thing about life freaking look me up and have a conversation with me conan i'm disgusted bro, conan, so I'm here's disgusted. a here's a thing but here's a <laughs> thing bro Here, here's a problem and i I'm have disgusted this. that i did that that sunday afternoon i'll never get that time back and i'm disgusted what are you well, more disgusted with the sunday afternoon with kevin gill or sitting on the plane next to me uh at uh, uh, w's on that flight for no, w's that w's. was bro that was euphoria compared to uh wasting my time with kevin gill <laughs> This uh, the other day on Twitter. The other day on Twitter, Vince Russo said I said that I've uh, said nothing bad about his show and whatever. And Vince stated that's not what Disco tells me. So I'm curious, Glenn, if you could elaborate on the things you've been telling. Uh, I haven't said anything. I haven't said it. Vince. What, what, what did I say about Kevin Gill? No, you know, you 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 just you just tell me what he says. That's all. Oh, well, that's right. Here's, a, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Kevin will throw like he won't commit fully to burying you he'll throw little little snide remarks and then pull back so you're never going to get him let let me tell you why can i tell you why conan because in his mind that gets him over with the marks bro that that oh i'm going to take a jab at vince russo and that's going to get me over with the marks and i'm going to get more twitter followers that's exactly why they do that's why ryan satin does it that and and, you know bro I'm, i'm glad these guys can use me to draw attention upon themselves 
themselves. But let me tell you, Kevin, the day I'm not a Vince Russo crusader. Kevin, show me, Kevin, show me the tweet I sent against Kevin, you or any, any Kevin, sort of the public day, Kevin, the uh, day is campaign. Gonna have to come. The day is going to have to come when you're going to have to draw an audience on your freaking own, bro. That day is going to come, so you might as well start practicing now. Kevin Gill, Kona, he, here's where they're clueless. Kevin Gill and Ryan Satin are ranting and raving about <laughs> me being a homophobe, right? Meanwhile, Conan, if you go on Vince Russo's YouTube channel, bro, I got a freaking transgender who has their own show on my freaking... Yeah, Miss Chantel Air, bro. I love, I love the girl Conan. She's got her own show on my brand. And these guys, because I make a freaking joke, oh, Russo's a homophobe. And, bro, it's not only Russo's a homophobe, then that other freaking more. I swear to God, bro, if I ever saw this guy, this other more, th- th- then he's contacting my sponsors, bro. Do you know how freaking low that is, Conan? He's contacting my sponsors because I made a freaking joke, bro. It was a joke. That's, bro, that's just politics these days, man. It's like this: the people that are people that are into politics that watch wrestling politicize. It's, it's, we politicize everything these days because that's like the thing to do. You know, everybody's drawing a line in the sand. You choose one Whoa, side, you choose the other, and stuff. So. I, I was going off. I had this this war a, a couple years ago with uh, some guys from a from a wrestling site because you know me, bro. I get I cut right to the chase. I go tell you to go f off. I don't spend a bunch of tweets going back and forth or EAD. Right. Yeah. And uh, and so they were like, bro, they they win. And they I was working in Lucha Underground at that time. And they they posted some stuff to to El Rey Network, which is a network that does it yep. um, to uh, who else was it to like two or three people that I worked with, you know, and trying to bury me and say, oh, do you know that Conan made these remarks? And, do you know, that Conan's a sexist. And I kept telling him, I don't give a shit who you tell. You can tell the whole world, bro. I don't care. But uh, that that's the way it is nowadays, bro. Anything you do, look, look at what happened to Milo. Look at what happened to Captain Griffin. Look at, I mean, any, look at right, Bill Right, that's the climate. What exactly went down? What are you getting with, with the sexy star thing and the Rosemary thing? I want to get on get in that right away. I start the stuff hot. What, what, what happened? What led up to it? What happened after? I'll let Conan take that one. Yeah, because Conan, you've, you've not spoken on this yet, have you? And made, made no comments on Twitter or anything. This is, this is the first time we're hearing your opinion of what Sexy Star did to Rosemary. And Sexy <laughs> Star is your girl. And as a matter of fact, I think if we went back <laughs> and on the archives of this show, um, there was actually, Ken, I think KG too, weren't you guys actually bringing up whether or not that she's a, a, a Hall of Famer or something like that? I, I, I brought it up, but Conan stated that I was incorrect. I was, and in hindsight, I was completely incorrect because uh, the Lucha Underground presentation and booking of her uh, influenced my statements. Like okay. her, the way she's presented there is different from the way she's presented overall in Mexico, or the okay, way she's you know, you know, Just to correct me, isn't she kind of like a shooter too? Doesn't she fight her boxers or, or something like that? Yeah, she's had one boxing match, and her her husband's an ex world champion boxer. Okay, all right. So, but that being said. She's a shooter, and she shot on Rosemary. Totally unnecessary. After the match, after she topped out, cranked it in, dislocated her elbow. Correct. Right. So okay, let's see what happens. <clears throat> the backstory here is is that especially in Mexico, the girls are very, very jealous of each other. They're very catty. A lot of bro, you can have five girls and fifty guys, and uh, those five girls will bring you twice the drama that the guys ever will. So. Um, uh, you know, there'd already been heat between Fabi and Sexy, even though Fabi wasn't in that match. Taya, when she was there, had heat with Fabi, had heat with Sexy. And now the girls that wrestled that night, Shawnee had heat with um with Sexy. Uh, uh, so they went in there, and as you saw, they were potatoes. Who's Shawnee? Is Shawnee Rosemary? No. no. Rosemary, Shawnee wrestles for AAA. Rosemary, there obviously. There were four girls. There were four girls in the match, Jacob. Jessica. Okay, four girls in the match. Okay. Yeah, right. And no one had any heat with Hamada, or was she involved too? Well, Hamada was was roughing Sexy up too. So I don't know if Sexy said something before the match, or I don't know. Um, I didn't know of any heat that they had from before. So, you know, uh, I mean, she clocked her with the, the top of that garbage can, and then when Sexy tried to hit her back, she put her arms in the way, and they basically beat her up. And I think that Sexy came back in, and she took it out on the wrong person, because I never saw Rosemary you know, taking liberties with her. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. So she, she, and she has tremendous heat right now. Yeah. I've never I saw seen. She got I've, wait, that's never all you're going to say? Seen. 
I want to hear your Anybody opinion. Gets it. Bro, she, she shouldn't have done it. What do you want me to say? She shouldn't have done it. She was wrong. Right? Okay. Yeah. What do you think? What would you, let me ask you a question. If you were running that show and she did that, what would you have done? Um, definitely uh, find her and suspended her publicly. Mm-hmm. How much did you find her? I don't know, bro, but um, I don't know right now what it would be. But that definitely would happen because, man, because if you don't do that, it, it's like co- the company's condoning this. You know what I'm saying? The match on the show is I gave my first ever six cluster bucks rating uh, that, that <laughs> 10, 10 team gauntlet match, whatever the hell that was. What did you, what uh, did you call a six? What, six what, what, what did you rate the match? Well, I, f- I figure if, if Meltzer can start giving out six stars, I'm, I'm going to start giving out six clusters. And that oh, was the biggest cluster fuck of a match. First, I'd this ever guy seen. heat with me. You know what I think about the Meltzer star rating system? Now you're trying to have your own rating system. That's got heat with me. And that's a, your rating system is on the list. Right? <laughs> wow. All right. Okay. Well, yeah, that all right. is twice. So let's talk about let's let's talk about the rest of the show. Conan, well, two things. One, I want to get your take overall on the show, uh, good, bad, and ugly. And then because I don't speak Spanish and I haven't had time to actually uh, sit there and and listen super close and try to. Uh, understand what was said um what if you've watched garza and daga and Hoovy's videos uh with their analysis of triple mania i'd love to hear uh what they had to say if, if you've had a chance to watch those no i haven't watched any of theirs all right no. well, what, was um, your, what were your thoughts overall but anyways that? i just thought the match when i've read the card i thought it was going to be it wasn't a great um card for 25th anniversary and um uh they had some good matches and they had they had more batches. That, they had more bad matches than good. At least the main event was good. Um, the tag team match was good. Um, I don't understand why Vampiro is choke slamming Johnny Mundo. But then I saw. I think they're wrestling in Aguas Calientes or something like that. But um, uh, I was listening it through Twitch or Twitch or whatever it was. You were on there, KG. Yeah, I, I did the English feed commentary. Bro, you guys, like, didn't know some of the wrestlers. Sometimes you were getting them confused. They didn't, One bro, time I got someone okay. confused. I'm, I want to make a statement on this. Yeah. Right? Um, KG got a lot of heat for his commentary on this, on this match. And okay? a ton of accolades. Okay. Well, I didn't see any of those. Um, because these were these showed up on my timeline. So in, you, in your defense, you, uh, the, the data. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Listen to this. You, the data you did a probably, good job? Well, on the overall show? No, I'm giving blowjobs. Yeah, bro, on the overall show. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Bro, you didn't know the names of people okay, that Tony, were in the Tony, match. In his yeah. defense. Hold on a minute. I, well, hold on. The corner wants I, to run his mouth. They did uh, two dark matches with uh, like eight or 12 people in them. None of those names were provided. Uh, none of those names were uh, had on-screen graphics, and we were not able to get those people's names. Well, so, isn't Vamp your boy? He couldn't hook you up with that information? Just like when Kevin Sabinovich came, I gave him all the information he needed. That's, well, not, that's not Kevin's fault. Yeah, that, that's a and, and it's the, the dark match pre-show okay, or whatever. Well then I'm, okay, no, here's, so when, here's, here's what I'm gonna say. Let me let me say my thing because because I started this. All right, um, I knew because I tweeted it. I said, "Congratulations!" Before this show ever took place, I said, "Congratulations for Kevin on com- for getting this gig on commentary." It's going to be interesting to see the heat he gets from mispronouncing the guy's names. In Kevin's defense, <laughs> okay. He's getting offered a gig to commentate a show. He's not going to say no, all right? Also, we all know that Kevin does not pronounce the Mexican names very well. However, so whoever, so whoever, wait, time, let me finish. So whoever's idea it was, it's not Kevin's fault. Whoever's idea was to use Kevin on commentary should take the blame for Kevin's um, shortcomings in calling the show, especially with respect to pronouncing and getting the names of the rest was correct. Hold on, though. You, you keep bringing up pronouncing. What was mispronounced? I called... Uh, oh, no, you Tejana. had to mispronounce. Dude, Conan, what are you, what are you okay, mispronouncing? Okay, how do you, you say Ivan Burguesa in Spanish? Say again? Well, you just told him ha- how to say it. Ha- right. <laughs> Hamburg, <laughs> the guy that you... Yeah, Hamburg 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 boy. Yeah. Nino Hamburguesa. <laughs> That's wrong. Hamburg okay. Case, not well, Hamburg Case. Okay, what else? Okay, but big deal. What, what you guys fail to realize is, who is this English feed for? It's a video game channel... And it's for a casual audience. It's a soft welcome, an introduction to the world of Lucha. It's like, come on in, check this out. This is something different. This is something vibrant. This is something being introduced. Bro, if along the way I, did, I didn't get, pronounce Hamburguesa got... correctly, I, uh, that's why I called him Hamburger Boy. That's a, a very, very nitpicking. Okay. H-I-E-D-R-A. You mispronounced her name. How do you pronounce that name? <laughs> um, hold on. H-I-D-E-R-A. That's Hedera, right? No. What is it? 
Right, I thought I, I had it written down. Season. I have it. Okay, don't, don't, was... Kevin, don't even worry about it. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. I know it doesn't big, matter. Big, you, oh, you're a big man, Conan. You, you sure <laughs> showed me up. <laughs> I like that you <laughs> came with the big guns. If I pronounced Hamburger Boy's name incorrectly. <laughs> You, you got me, brother. <laughs> Edna, you didn't know who Martha Villalobos was. Neither did your partner who, who she was. You said, oh, who's this? Who's Because he goes, oh, a legend's coming out. And you go, uh, what's her name? Which right there shows you didn't know who she was. And he goes, I'll just wait till they make the official announcement, which meant he didn't know what her name was either. Like your product knowledge wasn't good. That's all. When Poder oh, del oh, yeah, Norte. Because oh, I'm going be? to study the entire fucking history of AAA yeah, in, the, I, in the three fucking days I had. From when I got the gig to yeah. when the show was due, so exactly. big. Tony, so Tony, when, Tony you, when, here's the thing. No, no, Tony, no, no, Tony no, no, listen no. to this. If you're asking Tony, me, you're I'm being telling... way too critical for that. You're being way too critical oh, for that. Okay. okay. So when, when Poder del Norte shows up into the ring, a trio that's been on TV for the last, what, eight months, and you guys didn't know who they were. How? If he doesn't watch the shows, how is he supposed to know who they And they're not on the part. sheet, dude. If they're not booked and they're not yeah. on the sheet and there's no on-screen graphic and no one says their name, how am I supposed to know who they are? You're being a fucking dude. You're not. Okay, wait a minute. So you're you're not going to say, hey, is there going to be any run-ins? Is there anything that I should know? Is there anything, anything? Yeah, I mean, because right, I've never called the show before, Conan. I haven't been doing this shit for years. That's not my point. Just you didn't have I product. I will say this. I will say this, though, Kevin, okay, is that you were kind of part of the big herd mentality when Jim Ross got a lot of heat for mispronouncing the, gap, the Japanese guy's names at the New Japan show. So Jim Ross didn't have three days' notice. Uh, Bob, well, it doesn't matter, okay, because this is kind of hypocritical. Matter. It's kind of hypocritical. To come off as a professional product, it is on the company whose product it is to at least do some sort of informing to its commentators, give them some rules. Yeah, but rules, listen, you guys, have an entire, you guys have a whole agenda against AAA. You guys rant and rave every week on here, on other podcasts, on every social media you, you have. Here. <laughs> about how you guys don't like AAA. So in other words, I, I just yeah, feel like the whole thing. I understand what you're saying, but in other words, wait, 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 I wait. did know I did know the people, the 30 men in, in, in that trios match. Uh, when some person runs in the fucking match that isn't on any format sheet, I'm sorry that I don't know who that is off the top of my head. You know what I mean? KD, wait, 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 wait. All I'm saying, this has nothing to do with an agenda against AAA or not. I'm saying that it's their show. You were hired to be the commentators, so they should provide you with the information. You and exactly. Gabe both said out loud during the commentary, we don't know the rules of this match because we weren't given them. That's all I'm saying is that should have never happened. And I, they should have provided time you time with time ample time information. Time. Should it never happen that Kevin said that or should it never happen that he was never given the format sheet? That he was never given the information. They should have given him the freaking information. And the I'm thing is, you. that's not Kevin. That's not Kevin's fault. I'm not saying it is. Kevin was saying I'm attacking Conan because is. I, think I don't Conan, like Triple A. I think Conan owes Kevin an apology. Absolutely not. He did a terrible job. He can give me the, all the we, verbal. If, huh? if, if, if we analyze this, and we, if we analyze uh, Kevin's responsibility for, for the Conan mistakes. doesn't even have commentary on his fucking shows. He just films them with no commentary. So when you have commentary and you can draw a house like AAA, I'll be interested in all your biased and narrow-minded criticisms of my work. Right. Until then, suck my dick from the back. <laughs> Conan, I think he's still over an apology. I'm not giving him shit. He sucked and he knows it. Well, we going to talk about KG? Oh, we can talk about KG. Go ahead. Well, where is KG? Well, obviously, he didn't show up. He didn't show up yesterday, and he didn't show up today. Yeah. Do you know why? He, do you have any idea why that might have happened? Uh, probably because I keep burying him on the show, and he doesn't like to be buried. Well, do you think that the way you buried him last week was fair? Absolutely, 1,000%. Let me ask you, let me ask you, let me tell you why. I'd like to hear it. I'd like to hear it. Yeah, because he goes on Twitter, and he goes on Facebook, and he goes on all these rants about me being a pussy motherfucker and all this bullshit where I can't answer back to him. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when he told me this story, I was like, that sounds very fishy to me. And um, I don't know if he told me or uh, yeah, I think he told me he goes, uh, um, I saw him at TNA tapings. That's what it was. I saw him at TNA tapings mm -hmm. and I'd never met him. And I go, bro, what, what was the deal? What was the problem that you had with um, KG on Facebook? And then he said, yeah, I heard what he said on, on the podcast. That's bullshit. I go, will you come on to rebuttal? And I knew if I brought him on the show, he would not let him talk. He'd talk over him because that's his MO or laugh over him. And this guy's like kind of a 
kind of introverted. He will probably, you know, stop saying what he has to say because this guy keeps interrupting him. So, so you let this guy come on and bury bury KG without allowing KG to retort to this guy's uh, what he was saying. Exactly, just like I can't retort to him on Twitter, Facebook. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. Would you say that um, that you are complimentary of KG on Twitter, or do you bury KG constantly on Twitter? Oh, you know the answer you're, to that. You're, so there, you're, you're trying to make it sound like KG burying you on Twitter is kind of like an unacceptable thing. When that's no, all it's you not do an unacceptable. It's, a, it's an unacceptable thing, but he went on a rant, yeah. right? Saying, well, "Oh, okay. well, he got fired, and he's well, a pussy. Well, he's a player look, hater." Well, you got to be a player you for me. Your, your Twitter timeline and the way you talk about KG before you criticize the way he talks about you on KG. It's completely tick for tat. Well, hundred hundred percent. I mean, you can't, just you can't even argue. Here's you can't a, even argue that. For tat, he just got tatted. Boom. He's a bitch, bitch made, and that's all there is to it. If you were bitch made, I'd treat you like that, but you're not. He is. So if you want to feel sorry for him, that's on you. I don't give a fuck, bro. I'm Straight not. Up. I'm not. I'm not feeling sorry for anybody. I right. just think it's. A, I just think it's a kind of a, a, a heel move to like bring that kid on with, and then have him confront the guy. Say, hey, would you be willing to confront KG about this? Yeah, yeah. You didn't even get ain't no, you, ain't you, no you, pussy you, here, you bro. You didn't even get the chance to confront KG about what he said. You just huh? let the guy tell you is like, like like a story or something, and then you post. Well, it. he did tell. Me, well, KG told me a story, right? You heard the story, and then he told me a story, right? Yeah, that's it. And like I said, you know, I knew he wasn't going to let the guy talk. I, I would disagree with that. All right. Well, let disagree. me let me give my perspective real quick because I I think what happened was, and people probably think that we just aired it, but actually. Uh, that happened about three weeks ago. So we sat on that clip and we didn't use it. And I think what happened was, and, and Conan, correct me if I'm wrong, that once uh, it got heated between Conan and KG a couple of weeks ago over the AAA commentary, and KG really started coming out with the insults, he sucked my dick from the back, and all this stuff. And then he and then he was burying him on AAA uh, or on uh, Twitter about AAA. That's why he got fired and stuff like that. Then I think uh, Conan's shot back was by Aaron the David David Christ uh, rebuttal. I mean, do you think that? Well, that, I mean, that, that's, that's still it's not a good move. Why don't you bring the guy on, uh, bro? How many times do I have to say this? Because I know he's not going to let the guy get a, 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 a word out edgewise. Well, bro, look, <clears throat> I get tired of hearing him. And this was another thing he put out there. He's like, well, you know, if Conan would put the show out on time. What the fuck do you care what time I put the show on? Is your name on it? No. So that's my problem. That's my problem. I'm the guy that has to deal with that, not you. You're not even producing the show. You're not even editing the show. So why is this being being brought up again? Yeah, I'm saying both 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 you guys fall. Like him getting upset about stupid shit like that, and you responding to it. All right. Well, that's what happened is what happened is what happened. I you know it's not a big deal to me. You know, Um, uh, there's just less kazoo's on the show. We haven't even had a kazoo yet, have we? No, we have no, zero we have not, But I should give you one here. <laughs> uh, let me see. Anything else you want to discuss about KG? Because uh, you no. seem pretty fired up about it. No, I'm not fired up. I just think it's. I just think it's funny that like uh, like the way you guys have responded to each other. It's just. It's very. It's very. Well, you know where it comes from. You know all those stupid text messages. Yeah, he does. He does harp on it. There is definitely weekly. You know, oh, uh, if you're if you're waiting for the show, you better go get a workout in and uh, take a walk around the block because you're gonna be waiting a while. That kind of stuff. So it, that still does happen. KG actually, like you know, you know, I, 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 you know these these guys hate KG. I actually like picking on him because he's such an right. easy easy person to pick on because he's so condescending. And right. he's so he's, he's he's just um, like the he's just wait, let me just say this he's almost like what Trump does he knows the so the you know the social justice words are easy to rile up and he riles them up and that's what you do to him right and uh but he does tweet like a fifteen year old right. like like a fifteen year old wrestling family very immature you know and that's definitely not shtick he like actually right I, and, he, and he's all you got to do is go just look at the lucha go to lucha underground. And look at the episode where he's the crowd marking out. That's that's not shit. That's <laughs> right. Him. That's tremendous. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, and then and, and it was funny because he would t- he would tell he always wanted to be because he wanted to be the cool guy on the podcast. And I go, bro, that's not you in real life. That's not you in any maybe where the people well, no, you no, hang out with. Cool. Yeah. He is a big wig in the Juggalos. Yeah. And so but, I was getting to that. 
Pepsi's so I, a big way. But outside of that, it's like right. he's a point of job. Wait, but the juggalos. Yeah, let me tell you what happened. So one day, I I was watching the Juggalos channel or website, whatever. He was on there, and they were kind of doing what we do, um, which I don't. They they probably were doing it before we were, but um, basically, what they do is they have like these uh, hip hop artists send in tracks, right? right? And then right. they would play the song, and then you know, like four people on the panel, KG being one of them, would rate it kind of like we do. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, and on that panel, he thought he was the cool guy. You know what I'm saying? Like he tried to be, like he always does, smarter than everybody, hipper than everybody at 47 years old. And then he would come to our show, and he wanted to have that same persona. I was like, bro, no, absolutely not. You know? And so he would tell me stuff like. Can you take that off? Can you can you take that off? Because I'm afraid Stephanie McMahon might hear it. I go, bro, there is absolutely no way she's listening to our show. Okay, uh, you know, please, 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 please don't mention my age. I go for what? Who cares? He goes, no, there, you know, there's ageism and all that. I go, bro, if you're worried about your age, you should look at your face. You should put a mask on with that fucking aardvark <laughs> face you have. You know what I'm saying? Forget about your age, just your look. You know, so uh, we we missed the king of self fellatio linguistic menstruation because we love to bury him. I love when Russo buried him. I love when Jericho buried him. Uh-huh. I love when Cyrus buried him. You know, I, it was just awesome with him, Nick, bro. The train wreck show. Remember when Nikki, uh, what was his name? Nikki uh, Scars. Scars buried him. Mitch Valentine right. buried him. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is that we do miss that. 